For thousands of years, the roofs of fine castles and churches have been plated with copper. Both the concert hall, where we are now, and the city hall, where we shall dine and dance, have copper rooftops. But before the party starts, please join me on a journey to the past. We land in Stockholm almost 400 years ago in 1624. Sweden is the champion of copper production. Since the government wants a higher copper price, it launches the copper coin. Two decades later, wanting to raise the value of copper once more, the government introduces the copper plate coin. Instead of using silver for big payments, the government urges the use of large minted copper plates. The $10 plate weighs almost 20 kilos. It is the bulkiness of the copper currency that breaks the resistance to banking. In 1657, Stockholm Banco is open for business. For the first time, Swedish merchants can deposit their currency in a bank and settle payments with a stroke of a pen. No longer need they break their backs carrying heavy copper plates around the city. Soon, the borrowers are even happier than the depositors. Stockholm's Banco starts to lend at better terms than Stockholm's traditional moneylenders. But already in 1660, Stockholm Banco experiences its first bank run. The government triggers the run when it suddenly decides to mint new, lighter copper plates. Since older plates with the same dollar imprint have a higher copper value, depositors rush to get their old plates back before someone else does. The bank must halt lending to the distress of borrowers seeking to extend their loans. Many of them must sell assets at fire sale prices. After a second run, a few years later, the bank goes under. What to do? Can't deposit banks lend liberally without risking a financial crisis? Sweden's solution is to start a new bank, governed by the parliament. In 1668, with deep pockets and at arm's length from the government, the world's first central bank is born. From 1668, let us stride 315 years ahead. In 1983, Douglas Diamond and Philip Dibvig develop a fundamental theory of banking and bank runs. The theory says that any ideal financial arrangement promises each saver instant access to her funds, yet channels most of these funds to long-term projects. However, the ideal arrangement is fragile, just like Stockholm Banco. Preventing bank runs requires public regulation, such as deposit insurance and emergency loan facilities. The very same year, Ben Bernanke discovers how bank failures affected the Great Depression in the 1930s. His analysis of historical records and economic statistics reveals that bank failures were costly mainly because of broken ties between lenders and borrowers, not because the money supply fell, as we believed before. 